Welcome to episode number 37. Business and Leadership Stories has been gathering momentum for a while. Sachin Mandari, leadership coach, all-round good man, storyteller, is back for the attack, visiting from cool, calm Mysuru. <laughs> that is true, that is true. How are you, my friend? How well? Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Now I'm realizing that the number of episodes is getting close to my actual age. Uh, when we started, I wasn't sure if we'll go on for so long. Oh, you're still a spring <laughs> chicken, my friend. Well, you belong now to the city that Sadhguru originally belongs from. Except that you migrated to Mysore. That is true. Sadhguru studied in Mysore, if I'm not mistaken. That is true. Not just that, he also attained Nirvana in, in Nirvana Mysore. In Nirvana, in Mysore. Chamundi Hills. This is the Sadhguru who runs the Isha Yoga Center in Coimbatore. Now, I believe you went visiting my friend. And you now have a fair idea of what makes Sadhguru very popular. That is true. And it's something that I've been trying to decipher for a while. You know, I got to know about Sadhguru probably about a decade ago. And I suddenly started seeing a lot of people in corporate jobs were following this man called Sadhguru. I hadn't really listened to his talks on YouTube. Um, and uh, over the years, of course, I have stumbled upon his videos. But that answer, why is Sadhguru so popular, is something that had eluded me and that is something I found when I went to Isha Foundation. I didn't went, go there on my out of my own accord. It's not like I was attending a course or any of his talks. A friend of mine was getting married and his to-be wife was actually is actually an Isha yoga practitioner and also a teacher. So they were getting married in Isha Foundation in one of the temples. And uh, you know we were hanging out there, me and my wife for a couple of days. And then one day I actually... Let, let me interrupt you. Are you skeptics? Are you agnostic? Are you believers? <laughs> uh, I, I think the best best term is skeptic. Um, Fair enough. <laughs> no harm, no harm in that. Yeah. Uh, right. So you know, I realize that uh, religion, gods, all of these things are also stories. So I have my doubts about. Uh, to about, each his own. To yes. each his own. So so I was I was I, I, was, I remember sta they have a really beautiful store at Isha Foundation which sells many different kinds kinds of things and there was one shelf which had millets on display and uh, the you know they have these small placards which explain every product and and that that placard read that most Indians are on a single uh, cereal diet which is not good and it creates health problems and hence it's important to have a multi-grain diet and those were pretty much like multi-grain uh, packets and multi-grain millets uh, wow and suddenly i was tempted to actually buy that packet so and then a light bulb went off in my head and i was like the one good thing about Sadhguru is that he just doesn't ask you to do something. He's not a preacher in that sense. He's actually an explainer. And I'll give you a few more examples. I remember watching this one video where he was explaining. So some, some lady in the audience asked him that, isn't Hinduism discriminating towards women because uh, in Hindu culture uh, when a woman is going through her periods or monthly periods is supposed to live outside of the house and isn't that a bad thing or something to that effect and I remember Sadhguru uh, explaining to the woman that uh, it's actually not living outside the house it's like a holiday that you get because during that time you are physically challenged and the Hindu, Hindu culture or Hindu you know, way of life does not want you to exert yourself during those times. And wouldn't you love to have that holiday? And in a way, he said that, you know, women of the 15th century India were, are better off than women now. And in many ways, I realize that every time that he explains a Hindu ritual, he has some kind of logic, some kind of science. And, and I believe that a lot of young Hindus actually want to fall in love with their religion, but nobody gave us answers, right? We were only told that Aisai karna hai. this is how you're supposed to do things because this is how it's been happening. His uh, uh, genius is that he's able to come up with simple, short and interesting explanations on Hindu scriptures and Hindu rituals. And I believe there are water tanks where you can actually, uh, you know, have a bath, prepare yourself for meditation. Do they call it the Tirtha Kunds? Yeah, yeah. Tirtha Kund. There's Surya Kund and there's Chandra Kund. Surya Kund is for men and Chandra Kund is for women. And does he have a why for that? It, it, that's a very, it has a very interesting why. Uh, he says that mercury in that Kund has been solidified at 99.8 degrees Celsius, something like that. And when you actually bathe, 
in uh, mercury uh, which is solidified in yeah, like 9.8 I mean, degrees water which has yeah, which yeah. is in contact with solidified mercury it prepares your body for meditation and that is why you should take a bath in that kund before you go into the meditation pla- uh, place i don't remember the name of the temple but it is the shivlinga the main dhyan kund or the, the dhyan place in uh, isha uh, center what about uh, smearing ash on the forehead yes that's something interesting that my colleague uh, my friend my partner in this company ranjini told me that one sadguru also explained so a lot of people asked i mean somebody asked him a question why do hindus smear ash on their forehead and his explanation was that when you smear ash on your forehead you know you have dandruff in the you know, in your hair and all of that which falls on your face and you get acne and things like that the reason for smearing ash is that it prevents acne and other things from happening on your face wow. so as much as it is the hindu ritual thing that you are highlighting your soul which uh, apparently resides in your forehead uh, it's also a scientific uh, reason that to not have skin problems interesting so basically get into the why of things that is true because if you get into the why of things then people will be really tempted to buy your story 100% and your concepts there why 100% would that be a starting point for the marketing and communication tip yeah th- th- that's what it is and even when i work with clients and i've looked at brands brands which are good at explaining the why they do really well but it doesn't just stop at explaining the why because you can tell someone explain the why and they can go on forever and they can be super boring right what sadguru does well is that his why is i would say s- sort of sciency Uh, I I'm tempted to rational use, yeah. science uh, scientific yeah, yeah I mean each to their own like you said uh, I, but it is sort of science it has some logic secondly it's compelling you know it's a compelling explanation which is simple enough and the third part is that it's short and simple so he doesn't get into like you know long drawn out explanation about the luminous things. explanations yeah, yeah he's yeah. very crisp very short logical and it's compelling and that is why i think a lot of young hindus have uh, found the love for isha and also sadguru but also a lot of foreigners who wanted the answers for life and questions about life have started following sadguru win with story is a wonderful newsletter that sachin mandari writes uh, you can find it on linkedin he coaches senior executives junior executives ceos as well as groups of people in organizations and takes them through his storytelling skills so that they can add productivity to the organization how can people reach out to you buddy people can reach out to me by watching a sadguru <laughs> video no no i'm just kidding just look for me on linkedin uh, it's sachin bhandari sachin is easy bhandari is b h a n d a r y and there's a link on there on my profile which says get in touch or stay in touch uh, which if you click at click that link you can go subscribe to the newsletter but also schedule a call with me to understand how your company or your leadership can win with stories until next week is bye bye yes namaskaram <laughs> 94.3 radio 1